I am addicted to new Pokemon Snap. And it's because of this right here, taking perfect pictures of Pokemon. I don't even care about Taillow that much, but I spent over an hour to get a flawless score. Perfect size, perfect direction, perfect placement. Now, I need to do that four times. One for every star. And then there's over 200 Pokemon in the game. So, if you like grinding, if you like getting crazy into this kind of stuff, new Pokemon Snap is for you. And this guide is going to give you the tips and tricks of taking the best pictures of Pokemon in your game. So if it helps you out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share this video with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below if you have any discoveries, if you've got any cool advice, I want to hear it because there's so many crazy things in this game. Did you know? Stage 1. First level of the game, there's a 5200 score Bidoof just chilling there. And it's going to take a little, and it takes a lot of grinding. You have to really get into it. But it's just crazy how simple that picture is and how high it can score. And once again, you just have to scale out and apply that to four poses for every Pokemon and even just trying to figure out. So let's go and talk about how the scoring works. A lot of it is self explanatory. Pose, if the Pokemon is doing something interesting, you get more points. Size, if the Pokemon fits perfectly in frame, then you can get up to 2,000 points. But you might notice something, like sometimes if you take a picture and the Pokemon just taking up the entire screen, you don't get a perfect size bonus. Well, that's because it has to fit. It has to be framed perfectly in there, but also be big enough. But this is kind of weird because that Talo that I just showed, it didn't take up the whole thing. It was just that. It was kind of in the center. It was kind of big. That still got a maximum score. So size is going to vary from Pokemon to Pokemon. There's no like formula of getting the perfect size for every picture. So that's going to be one of the things like as you farm a Pokemon, as you go for just, you know, taking hundreds of pictures of a single Pokemon to get the best score, you're going to kind of learn what it takes for the size. And that's also when you can use the comparison feature. I'm going to do a run later on this video, kind of applying all the things I'm talking about. And then we can just kind of keep showing it. So yeah, look at that. That looks like a big Tangrowth but it only got an 1800 because it wasn't all in frame. Direction, if the Pokemon's looking square at you, that's going to be a, a 1000. Uh, the Tangrowth, I had a hard time making it like look at me. The highest score I was able to get, I believe it was like 996 or 998. So it seems like there can be situations of scoring limitation, or maybe it comes out that like every Pokemon is programmed to where if you get the exact right picture, you can max out a score. And then placement, if a Pokemon is dead in the center, and there's a couple of ways of accomplishing this, then you can get up to one thousand points other Pokemon that's another crazy thing that we're gonna have to go into detail but yeah you might notice that you know one of these Bidoof isn't perfectly centered but we still got an amazing placement score we actually got the perfect placement score that's because if you can also balance and then try to get it as even vertically and horizontally while kind of keeping the size and direction in play you can make that placement score get pretty good now let's go to the daytime park course so I can share with you guys what I've learned from hours of grinding and one of the first things that became apparent is even though it seems like impossible to start taking like perfect pictures of Pokemon and then getting these crazy high scores consistently, the more you dedicate yourself to this, the better you're going to get at it. That if you really focus on one Pokemon in just a very meticulous way, you'll eventually find a very high score, if not a perfect score, and then you realize you're getting better at taking pictures of every other Pokemon. Also, you eventually just kind of learn everything about the course. I'm about to go up a bridge. That's going to adjust my camera and make it kind of drift slightly more upwards. So if I want this perfect picture of a Buffalon, I have to be really slow. I have to be really patient. That's really it. You know, you're only going to have so many opportunities of getting the perfect possible score so you just need to line up and wait for that shot and then take it when you have the opportunity to now you might notice if I press the a button I take multiple pictures well this is a setting that's unlocked after being the game and I strongly recommend just beating the game that way you have everything unlocked that way you're gonna be in the best possible state to grind for photo score and if you want to know how to beat the game I've got a guide like comment subscribe all that fun stuff description playlist YouTube so the burst mode there's points where it really works for me, and there's points where it doesn't work for me. So if you're just kind of like focusing on getting one perfect picture, sometimes turning off burst mode, it's fine. Especially because it lets you kind of reset at your own pace. Consider it like a follow-up shot in Call of Duty or something like that. Where if I take a picture of Pokemon, I'm like, I didn't like it. And you know, I need to kind of reset and make sure I get in there. You know, that's going to give you more opportunities to try to get that perfect shot. And this is where the placement score comes into play. You want to aim dead center in the square. That's where you kind of have to, you know, move the cursor very slowly, even at the pace of the Neo 1. And then eventually you just kind of line it up. And that's why, like, you have to use it. 
like an FPS cursor, like you're scoped in, you know, there is a horizontal bar that kind of helps you center it on this Pokeball right here. So what I like doing is I like lining it up vertically because I can use those horizontal bars to kind of get it right in the center, and then I can just kind of like snap it into the vertical position as I want it. And then it gets pretty tricky after that because you might not remember all the pictures you're taking. You know, there could be the perfect picture inside of 10 or so. And that only gets worse with the burst feature because as you set up the burst feature, was it the first one that I took that was great? Or did it kind of drift in in the middle of that? Or was the last picture a good one? So you're really going to have to focus on like one Pokemon or one style of Pokemon. And then you can go, oh, this is what gives me a high score when I'm just taking a picture of this Pokemon. And we can use Tangrowth as an example because I have a very very good score on Tangrowth, so getting that comparison, you know, you just have to really wait, you have to really be patient, you have to just try to keep it in, and then boom, perfect shot, just like that, and this is where it gets kind of weird, because you might notice from time to time, if you take a really good shot, you're going to see people pop up, Todd might say, wow, that was a great shot, Rita comes in, Phil, and from what I can see, that Phil, he means that you got perfect placement, or very high placement. I've had Phil compliment me on getting like a really centered Pokemon score, but it'll be worth like 990. So it means you got like a 99th percentile shot for placement, which is really good. That's what you want to be going for. So if you see Phil compliment you, then that means that's definitely a picture worth trying to get scored. Now Rita just said, wow, the Pokemon was looking right at you, and since that's a scoring requirement, it means you did really good with the direction of the Pokemon. But I've noticed like some inconsistencies sometimes with like what Rita says that actually doesn't give you that great of a direction score. And maybe you get to, like maybe you actually get 1,000 direction and 1,000 placement, but then Phil says, wow, I wish I took that shot. So. It's good guidance, but doesn't necessarily mean you took the perfect picture if you get like one of those blurbs in the top left corner. And I've also taken 1,000 score photos that they didn't say anything to. So it's kind of random, but it also kind of helps you out. So now we can go and we can check out the pictures. Now, Pichu. Pichu has like very crazy scoring potential right at the beginning of Park in the Daytime. So that's something that you can just kind of grind for, go over and over again. And if you can catch that right jump, if you can dedicate a lot of time, then you can get some crazy Pichu scores. And then we get to why the game is so addicting, and that's because it comes down to a game of pixels, millimeters. When you're trying to figure out like, oh, is this perfectly centered? Oh, is this one bigger or smaller? Or is it looking at me a little better? You know, what it, what it takes to get that perfect shot. And then, like I said, you have to remember, uh, Phil, he complimented me on one of these. Which ones was it? Is, is that one looking at me? It's asleep, so its head's kind of turned a little weird. You know, how, how do you get this one set up? It it gets kind of crazy like that. And I'm not wasting my time with some of these, like, weirder ones. I'm already really happy with my Swanadex. But now Tangrowth. This is, again, where the game kind of shows to be weird. And it also, like, if you want to get a high score, you have to make use of everything you got. So you can compare it to your Photodex high score, or you can compare two pictures that you just took. So you select one, and then when you go back in, you can ZL, and then that shows you just selected. So we're comparing these two shots that I took right here in this run. And then we can also compare it to our Photodex one, and you just have to come down to like the pixel that determines if this is a perfect score or not. And it gets kind of weird, because if you move this fast, it almost has like a 3D stereogram effect, which is another interesting thing to think about. And you'll notice that with your pictures, where the difference between them, it's a frame. And like... I don't know which is which and what it takes, but, you know, you can just start to get an eye for it. Seems slightly more to the left, you know, I might, I might want to get one that's more to the right because that's going to center it, but then I'm cutting off its feet, that's not going to be a perfect size score, so we need to zoom out a little bit, and the ultimate reality is I didn't take a perfect picture of Tangrowth here. So we're going to see how that one scores, and then we have Talo. So I'm trying to get a three-star Talo because, as you saw, my two-star and all that is absolutely insane. And that seems like a pretty well-centered Talo picture. It's not looking at me, but I don't know how you can get to dance and look at you for the three-star. And then we can go into some scoring. So it's really just this. And one thing is, if you just keep caring about it, if you really get addicted and passionate, you will take better shots. You will get better at the game. And as you can see, both of these Pichu, even though they're not centered, they got a perfect size score. So it's like the largest possible picture that you can take of a Pichu. And that's because I just ran into it, it stopped my cart, and I just took those pictures. Now, this is where things are going, to, are going to get weird. So, size, slightly smaller. Direction, not as good. Placement, even though the horn seems more centered, that's not how Buffalon works. That the way this Buffalon is angled, that you need the one on the left, that's a perfect placement. 
regardless of what your eye tells you, regardless if you think that the one on the right is placed more center. So that is where you have to like listen to the game. Sometimes it feels like, yo, great shot. All right, maybe that that is the 1000 placement and you have to use that as a baseline. But didn't get perfect skies or size, got slightly better direction. I don't remember which one it was for Rita telling me, but yeah, it just comes down that like there's a six point difference between my score and the perfect Tangra score. And that comes down to the factors of like how your camera is angled, when you're taking it, how much you sped up, how Tangrowth is looking at you. It's it's insane. So I mean that's a respectable score. It's no 4500, but it's a good starting point. And then you just kind of lock in on your score. You take a slightly bigger picture. You take one that's slightly more centered, and then you really work for that. So that just kind of shows you guys the thoughts of what goes into one run of taking just four pictures or so of really good Pokemon. Because like that's one nice thing about it. That depending on the Pokemon you're trying to go for, if there's one at the end, well then you take pictures of the Pokemon at the beginning, and then you work on that. I didn't think I was going to try to max out a Buffalon, but in the course of getting a 4500 Talo, I actually got one through four star Buffalon all over 4,000 points. So that's some really good stuff right there. I uh, also noticing like how Pokemon behave. I know that Pichu jumps six times right there. So on the sixth one, I'm going to go for a burst of shots and hope I get a really good one. So once again, it's kind of like, yeah, with that burst, it, it it's good and bad because it can like let you just kind of, you know, s stick on a Pokemon. It can give you that opportunity to take those really good shots. But which one was a centered one? Which one was the one you got complimented on? That's where kind of problems get in. But yeah, as you kind of progress through a level, as you hone in on one Pokemon, you just get better at the game. Like, I thought it was going to be overwhelming. I thought it was going to be daunting. I thought it was going to be impossible to get a single perfect Pokemon picture, but several under my belt, or at least close enough to perfect. I'm better than I thought. I'm doing way better than I thought I would do after just a couple hours of grinding. So you really have to dedicate yourself to this. Um, I know there's a ducklet over here that's four star when it's flying. So... I zoom up, like, and again, just memorizing patterns, getting ready for this. I zoom up until right before it dives, kind of keep my eye on it, but he comes in really low. So maybe something like this is where he's going to just kind of appear. Yep. Oh, nope. That was too far to the right. So even more to the left then. So you kind of have to line it up. You all, you have to become a speedrunner in a way. It's like, oh, if I'm on this pixel at this exact time frame and I jump right here at this exact angle, then I do a skip. Well, with this is like, if you set everything up perfectly, you can get the perfect shot. Man, I'm so tired of taking pictures of Tangrowth, but I still do it. And also, it's the the grayed out area isn't where that picture is going to be focused on. You know, it's the lightened area. So that's where you want to get your Pokemon fitting into the screen. Oh, I think, like, look at that. That last one looked great, but maybe the one before the last was even better. And then these are the Bidoof, the infamous Bidoof. So yeah, I snapped it right in the center. It looks like they were looking at me. Can I get one shot before they go and scurry off? But I don't think that's a 5200 score, so sometimes you feel it, sometimes you don't. Taylor, you gotta have that patience. You gotta wait till he starts looking at you. you. Gotta hold off to the last second, and then boom, take the picture right before he dances. That's centered, that's a three-star pose. Maybe he's looking at me, and then that's also gonna be a really good size. Is it perfect size? I Oh, you don't want to retry. You just want to quit research. Quitting research, let you in, let you get your photos taken care of, then you're good to go. Um, this isn't as tedious as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be boring. I thought it was going to be stupid to a degree where it's like, oh, I'm playing the same course a hundred times. This is, this sucks. But actually, the courses get faster. It's like your commute. It's like your road trip. The first time you're on a bus for an hour, it feels like forever. After that, it's like, oh, well, I felt like a 10 minute bus ride, you know, or a car drive or whatever, you know, your commute. So it's the same thing with this course. That course went by because I have it set up. I'm going to try to take a picture of Pichu. I'm going to try to take a picture of Buffalo. I look over to the left, boom, there's Ducklet. While I wait for Tangrowth, that just lines me up in Talo, press the R button, and then we're done. So it goes by a lot faster. And while this is, wow, that's, while this is a, a stunning Pichu photo, Pokemon in the background, that's a big one. Pokemon in the background can be worth several hundred points. That's going to be maybe a decent size on the Ducklet. You don't want to be chopping off too much Pokemon. We kind of covered that. Ooh. Ooh. I might have done that ever so slightly too early because he's looking at me. But he's not centered. But we're going to see how that scores. And yeah, the Tangrowth. Ooh. What now? Again, now we're getting into those comparisons. That's what a perfect placement Tangrowth looks like. It's more to the right. And then you just kind of get lost in yourself. So that's more to the left now, right? That one's kind of shrunken in, but this is still big size. 
And then I need to look for the one that's looking directly at me. It didn't feel like it was the exact last one. And this is where, what, it, what was it the second one? So that's looking at me. It's like cropped off one pixel. So as, you, as I've noticed, like as you can look on left, that's a 2000. So 2000 can have a little bit of space in it. And that seems rather centered. I think there's less travel in this one, so we'll see. I don't think that's that's what the perfect picture looks like, but it could be close. And then, yeah. No, this is when Rita was telling me that we had a good one, so maybe it was that first shot. That Bidoof could be looking dead at us, and then we'll have all those points, and we'll see if we get any upgrades. And that's what's about. And I'm doing this naturally as I'm recording, but I could also just shut up and get more into the grind. And even though that Pichu, theoretically better, we lost out on those points from the uh, Grookey. So if you have a if a Pokemon is posing in the background, like if a Pokemon is doing a two, three, or four star behavior, it gives you more points. If it's looking at you, it gives you more points. If it's fully in the frame, it gives you more points. So there's all kinds of crazy stuff. I didn't even try for that buffalo. I was just kind of like showing you guys. You can be that was a Magikarp, not Ducklet. I wasn't even paying attention. And sometimes just the game gyps you like that, and you just gotta suck it up. So the pose, 200 because that's another thing. Like the pose could screw you over. If I'm throwing an apple out of Taylor to get the two star, if the apple directly hits it, that's going to be a higher post score than if you wait an extra second to take the better picture. So everything else could be perfect, but we might lose this one because of the post. Perfect size, great direction, solid enough placement, but we lost out 258 points, so we didn't get it. The game comes down to the little stuff like that. Not a good size, placement was fine, didn't get the direction. So I think the placement, that was the one where he was like, yo, that one looks great. But somehow we lost 90 points in size. Like, it could be because of the bushes, but there's bushes in the other one. So it's cut off maybe just a little too much, and that just starts hard costing us points. Direction? That one wasn't looking at us as good. It just comes down to stuff like that. Now, these Bidoof are crazy. So, everything else is perfect, but the placement. And I could see that, if that one was just slightly more to the left. But we got the direction, and that's all it takes for a perfect size Bidoof. So, these are my thoughts. This is what, like, okay, here's the thing. If you kind of understand me, then play the game until you understand me. And once you understand me, then I think you're successful and you're going to start taking a lot of pictures. You know, because I'm the one, like, you gotta mutter to yourself. You gotta be like, okay, so if I do that, I'm gonna set that one up, and that's why I'm looking for, for this tail and then if I'm going for the one point, I need to... You know, like, if you get weird about it, that's how you have to play the game. You have to get weird, you have to get addicted, and then you just kind of keep on going with it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.